everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Al. I'm one of the pastors at Gateway. It's my privilege just to bring you our, our devotional uh, this week. And I just want to read from uh, a psalm that has really been on my heart and I've really been living with over the past uh, week or so. It's just really captured my heart and it's really encouraged me in faith. And my prayer is that as I just share these thoughts with you for a few moments, that it too would uh, encourage you and draw you closer to God at this time. So we're going to be reading from Psalm uh, chapter 61. We're going to read all of it, but I'm just going to really emphasise and pick out uh, from the first three verses, but you're welcome just to meditate and consider the rest of the psalm in a bit more detail as well in your own time. So we're reading from Psalm 61, which is a psalm of David. He says this, Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me a heritage for those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. Like many Psalms, we don't know the exact context that this was written into, but most scholars think that David was writing this Psalm after his son Absalom had tried to overthrow David from, from the throne. David was the rightful king of Israel and Absalom tried to come in and take over. And David had to flee Jerusalem and go and hide in a, in a cave with some of his friends. He had to run away for fear of his life from his son Absalom. So David is writing this psalm in a very difficult situation. And he, he writes, doesn't he, in the second verse, when my heart is faint. Or another way of saying that is when my heart is overwhelmed or feeble. I think David in this situation faced another moment in life where he felt weak and overwhelmed and feeble. And the word there, when it's talking about his heart, it really talks about his inner person, his soul, his mind, his heart. He felt overwhelmed, very burdened, very troubled, very fearful, I guess, of what the future of his kingdom was going to look like now that his son had tried to take over and overthrow his kingship, if you like. And the reality is, for many of us, we, we will face moments in life when our heart feels faint. I love how David doesn't write, if my heart feels faint. He says, when my heart is faint. There will be moments in life, there will be moments in lockdown when we feel a sense of being overwhelmed, a sense of our heart being faint and feeble, the, the inner part of us just feeling weak and weary. And maybe you're watching this now and you would describe yourself like that. Maybe you've had a long day on the front line or at work. You just feel tired and weary. Maybe you've been at home all day with the kids and you're just feeling weary and your heart feels overwhelmed. Maybe you're struggling with isolation and loneliness at this time of lockdown. Maybe you're facing despair or sorrow or grief or maybe you just feel anxious and fearful and this psalm just has so much to teach us to us to dive into and to look at how David responds as his heart feels faint and overwhelmed and we're just going to look at three very quick things that we can learn from Psalm 61 about how David responds in a moment when his heart feels faint and overwhelmed and the first is this, we, we read these words in, in verse 1 and the beginning of 2. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you. It might be better translated as, God, hear my shout 
David is kind of shouting to God, saying, God, listen to me, hear me. I'm in distress. I'm calling out to you. And I just love how David's first response to a moment of challenge is to turn to God in prayer. Now, he doesn't shout to God. He doesn't tell God to listen because God is not attentive or because God doesn't is deaf. That is absolutely not what's going on here. David knows that he is calling out to his God and petitioning God is really the heart of prayer. Asking God for things is really the heartbeat of a life of prayer. And David knows this. Charles Spurgeon wrote this. He said, asking is the rule of the kingdom. And David, in his moment of challenge and his soul being overwhelmed, he turns to God in prayer. And I just love that, how his first response is turning, facing his Lord and Saviour and saying, God, hear me, I'm calling out to you. And I love how David doesn't dress it up. He doesn't pretend he's OK. He, he's vulnerable and real before God. He tells God, my heart is faint. And we too can be real and vulnerable before God, our maker. You know, we are fully known yet fully delighted in. God knows our hearts. He knows what we need. He hears the cries of us, his children, and therefore we can come confidently to him and say, God, listen to my prayer. We can come with whatever we're feeling, with whatever we are facing, however our heart feels, we can turn to him in prayer and say, God, I'm turning to you. I'm telling you how I feel, but I'm coming to you and I'm asking uh, for, of you for the situation that I am finding myself in. And it's the very act here that David does of turning to God in his moment of crisis that shows his dependency and trust in God. And I love how the psalm ends just on this note. It ends with praise. So will I ever sing praises to your name. By the end of the psalm, the situation hasn't changed. He's still outside of Jerusalem, still hiding from Absalom, but he still says, I will sing praises to your name. And so we are to turn to God and to pray and to praise him. It then goes on to say this, doesn't he? What do I need when my heart is faint? Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. What does David ask of God? He asks God to lead David to himself. Do you know, right through scripture, God is described as a rock, or not just a rock, but the rock. In Psalm 18, it says this, who is a rock but our God? In Psalm 31, it says, you are my rock and my fortress. He's not just a rock, he's the rock who is sure and certain, who is secure, steadfast and strong. And David knew that God was the rock that was higher than himself. And he knew that he needed someone greater than himself in this moment when his heart was faint and overwhelmed. As a Simon Brading song that we sometimes sing at New Day goes, it says, nothing in this world can steal my busy heart like you do, God. And I don't know about you, but when my heart feels faint, when I'm exhausted, when I'm overwhelmed, I sometimes am much quicker to turn to Netflix than I am to turn to God. And I just feel really provoked about how am I letting God take me to himself in moments when my heart feels faint and overwhelmed. And I just love what David says here. He says to God, lead me to yourself. Doesn't that just conjure up uh, images of Psalm 23 about the good shepherd leading his sheep beside quiet waters. And I just think that is the Christian life. It's not self-reliance. It's not self-dependence. It's saying, God, you are my shepherd and I want you to lead me beside quiet waters. I want you to lead me to green pastures. I need you to restore my soul and my heart. It's not being dependent on myself, it's being utterly dependent on the rock that is higher than I. And I just think it's a beautiful expression of David where he says, lead me, God, to the rock that is higher than I. And then the third thing that David says in verse three, it says, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. 
Do you notice here in the psalm that it goes from talking in the present tense to talking in the past tense? David suddenly says, you have been my refuge. And I think what David is doing here is he's reminding himself and he's recalling the faithfulness of God in his life. Maybe he's thinking about when God brought him victory over Goliath. Maybe he's thinking about when God rescued him from the hand of Saul and he's seen the faithfulness of God time and time and time again. And he's telling his weary soul, oh God, you have been my refuge in times of trouble. And I know that you will still be my refuge in this situation. And that's true for us. We can read scripture and see the faithfulness of God from generation to generation. And we can also recount stories of our own lives where God has been faithful to us and seen us through storms of life, where he has been our refuge and a strong tower against the enemy. And so we can be like David. And I just want to finish really just by encouraging you and inviting you to do these three things today and in the days ahead. Turn to God in prayer. Ask him to lead you and remember his faithfulness. Let me just close in prayer and I just want to encourage and invite you just to join me. Maybe you want to just uh, close your eyes just to still your heart before God right now. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that you are the rock upon which we stand. You are our fortress and our deliverer and our refuge and our strong tower. And we recognise that we go through seasons of life when our hearts and our souls feel faint and overwhelmed. And we want to pray, God, in all seasons of life, would you lead us to the rock that is higher than I? Lord, we, we want to pray that you would be like the good shepherd, that you would take us to green pastures, you would take us beside quiet waters and bring peace and joy and love to our anxious, weary and troubled souls, King Jesus. We just want to pray right now. Lord, I want to pray for anyone who is watching this. I ask Holy Spirit, would you come and fill each person afresh with your goodness and your love and your mercy. And may you lead them today. I pray that we would be men and women who are quick to turn to you in prayer. Men and women who are quick to ask you to lead us. And men and women who are quick to remember your faithfulness. God bless you guys. Take care. Hope to see you soon. We love you very much.